today we're going to talk about the relationship reservoir. Last week we um, had a really great conversation with Sean Miles talking about the personal reservoir and various aspects of that. And I'm actually really um, thrilled today that I have two of my favorite people to um, join me on the podcast. I've got my wife, Ellen, um, and my oldest daughter, Rachel, who are our guests today. Hi. <laughs> Hi, sorry. <laughs> yeah, <it's> audio. <laughs> um, and so I, I want to start by just kind of talking a little bit more about what the relationship reservoir is, and then um, the three of us will just kind of dialogue and, and kind of try to flesh out some of the important principles around the relationship reservoir. So like we talked about last week, each and every one of us has a personal reservoir of energy that we function on. And we talked about what it takes to be able to uh, manage that effectively. Anytime that you have two people, you have a relationship reservoir that those two people share. And that relationship reservoir is filled out of each of those individual reservoirs. And, and just like a personal reservoir, relationship reservoirs also have the drains and, um, and, you know, things that get in the way. They also have um, muck down at the bottom and, and, and relationships can be sucking mud just as, as well as individuals can be sucking mud. And um, one of the main differences is that the relationship reservoirs are filled out of um, each person's individual reservoir. And so um, if, you're, if you're sucking mud, then you don't have anything to contribute to the relationship reservoir. Uh, you guys have both heard me talk extensively about um, the reservoir and the relationship reservoirs. What, what, are, your, what are your kind of thoughts on um, the importance of the relationship reservoir or just kind of different things that um, come to mind when you guys contemplate these issues or these, I guess, this variable? You go first, Rach. Okay. Um, I think that it's definitely something that I've been able to apply a lot in my relationships. Um, I think it's something that we don't a lot of times think consciously about, but obviously if anyone has been in a meaningful relationship with anyone, you know that relationships require energy. So I think we kind of intuitively recognize that our energy does go into relationships um, and that relationships do have drains. We can always tell when something's not going well in a relationship, but I don't think we a lot of times consciously think about how to proactively counteract that. Um, so I think the concept of the relationship reservoir um, is really helpful to keep in mind just in being able to recognize those drains, but more importantly, recognize the things we need to do to fill back up and to effectively manage that reservoir rather than just kind of seeing it as something more outside of our control, which I think is something that we do a lot. Yeah, I think that's a, a really good point. I, I think a lot of times as, as I've worked with people across time, mm -hmm. I, there's for a lot of people, there's, there's this feeling that relationships are either kind of destined to be great or not. And, <laughs> yeah. um, and that, when things are not going well, it's just a lot of times it's like, well, the relationship kind of ran its course and, mm -hmm. and we're doomed. Uh, it's time to move on. Um, yeah. and, and in reality, there are lots of things. We have lots of really good science that helps us understand what it takes to, to have successful relationships and effectively managing our, our resources is, a, is an integral part of having a, a healthy relationship. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Well, I just think that's where the work of the relationship is. Like you said, it's kind of the bread and butter of a relationship. You have to work on your reservoir in order to have what you need to put into the relationship. If you're always, if you don't focus on that, I don't see how you can be successful in any relationships. Yeah. Um, what, <clears throat> what are examples of drains um, that, that you guys have noticed that, that drain relationships, drain our, I guess, consume our, um, our relationship resources. Um, yeah, relationship. I think for me and 
Dallin, my husband, were both in school. And so I think a big one um, that affects our relationship reservoir is that we're both really stressed about school all the time. And a lot of times how we manage that with each other <laughs> can result in being a pretty big drain. Um, that kind of ties to what mom was saying too, that if you have, if you have nothing to give, um, then it's harder to manage a relationship well. But um, that's a source of conflict as well, because if we're like both so busy, it can be hard to balance the other responsibilities like cooking or stuff around the house or running errands. Um, so I think just being so busy with school and work and the stage of life that we're at can be almost a constant source of trains for us. Yeah, I, um, I think another important piece here is that it's, it's in living life and just being in a relationship consumes <laughs> resources. Yes. You, you have to pay bills. You have to parent. You have to, you know, grocery shop and clean the house and go to and from work and um, yes. manage life. And, and so if, if we're not doing anything to combat that sort of um, bleeding that takes place, then, um, th then relationships get sucking mud. Yeah. Um, any thoughts on drains or you just said all mine. Okay. <laughs> um, so, so fillers. Um, what, uh, Ellen, what are some of you examples of, um, well, so let me define real quick. So there's, there are two different things. Um, so remember that a filler leaves you better off for having participated in whatever that is. It gives more than it requires. And, and there, there are two different things when talking about relationship. Um, resources. One is a relationship filler, and a relationship filler is a um, is a positive shared experience. It's something that both people enjoy doing in the relationship. Both both people benefit from it, and, and that's a little bit different from from a relationship deposit. Relationship deposits are things that are just like putting pennies into the peggy, penny bank. Um, but, but they may not necessarily be a positive shared experience. So uh, what are some of your favorite relationship fillers? Um, my favorite ones are to like go get a drink, go get a Coke or run errands together. So I don't have to run errands by myself, but I don't know if that's mutual or not. Yeah. I, I enjoy doing those things most of the time. <laughs> so, occasionally um, they're a deposit. <clears throat> Um, sometimes watching sports, but sometimes not. Yeah, sometimes um, that's probably a filler for you, and sometimes it's probably more of a deposit that you're making, right? Depends on who's playing. Yeah. <laughs> so, can I just clarify something? Yeah. So, a deposit <laughs> would more be like something you do for the other person, exactly. rather than something that you do together that you both enjoy. Right. So deposits are things like sending a text. Hey, I love you. Hope you're having a good day. It might be, you know, uh, loading the dishwasher or giving a foot massage or... Or like mom ha will drop you off drinks at right. work. Yeah. One of my favorite things is to open my door after a session and there's a drink there. And, and that's a really great relationship deposit that, that she does fairly frequently. Um, and so those, those kinds of things are, you know, leaving notes or... Um, you know, things like that, that are, that are deposits where relationship fillers are things that are more, um, you know, it might be playing a game it might be going for a hike um, or, you know, non-sexual affection, like holding hands and hugs and kisses. Um, depending on the relationship, it, it might, sex um, it hopefully <laughs> is a relationship filler. Um, it might be going for a walk or, you know, going to the movie, reading a book together, um, dancing, uh, listening to music, you know, things like that. Anything that is um, something that is a positive shared experience. <clears throat> one, of the, one of the important components of this is that, um, and, and actually Rachel and, and Dallin have been really good examples of this. Um, 
it's a, it's a really good idea to, to intentionally have a, a relationship filler every single day. It's really beneficial for your brain to receive the message that you matter to that other person. Mm -hmm. And so if you know that even if it's going to be 15 minutes every single day, they are going to make time for you to be a priority in their lives. Uh, it sends a really good message about, about your level of importance to that person. Um, and, and Rachel and Dallin have done a really good job of that. They've, um, Rachel, why don't you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it's actually works out really well because Dallin is such a big planner. <laughs> so um, every Sunday we try to do just like a real basic weekly planning, like any events we have during the week, that kind of thing. And then we make sure to plan at least a little filler for every day of the week. Um, yeah. And I think, I mean, you gave us, you gave us the advice to do that back in March when at the beginning of this pandemic and such, and it really, I think it's really made a huge difference. Um, especially when we couldn't really go out much, um, it was really fun to think of like creative things that we could do at home or do outside together. Um, and actually Dallin has been, even though I was kind of the one initially pushing it, Dallin has been super great about not letting us skip relationship fillers. And like you said, that's made me feel really important. So if I'm like, Oh, well, like if we're getting close to the end of the day, he'll be like, we haven't done our filler yet. And if I'm like, Oh, well, we don't really have a lot of time. He's like, no, we need it. We need to make time. Like let's make sure we do it. And that really, I know how busy we both are. So that makes me feel like our relationship is the number one priority for mm -hmm. him. Um, and some of our favorite things, we we're reading Pride and Prejudice together right now, which is a super funny and amazing book. So that's been super fun. We've mm -hmm. both enjoyed a lot. Um, we've been going on a lot of walks together, which has been really fun. Um, yeah. And I think, we used to watch a lot of TV <laughs> together and we do, we do enjoy that and it is fun, but um, we've, we've realized that it's not as good of a filler as some of the other things where we get to interact more. So we've been trying to cut back more on that and do more fillers where it's things that we still both enjoy, but that we're able to interact more. One of the things that I frequently ask people to do that I'm working with is to, is to, is to do a, a relationship filler every single day. Um, it's a really good idea to alternate who plans those. So, you know, one day one person plans, the, the next day the other person plans. And then to do three deposits every day in addition to that. And so just three little things that even if, even if there are things that you normally do, it's different in, in my mind if I'm doing them to communicate to Ellen that she matters to me, it has a very different energy. And so I could load the dishwasher because I'm frustrated and want the dishes, you know, whatever, or I could load the dishwasher because I want her to know that I'm thinking, you know, participating in our family or whatever, or I want her to, that I'm, that I'm depositing into our relationship and it's going to have a very different feel. And so those kinds of things, um, Ellen, what have you noticed? Um, what, what's the what's the difference like when the relationship filler is in good shape versus when it's kind of sucking mud around the bottom half of the tank? there's no difference <laughs> <laughs> no it's it's there's a big difference in what you'll tolerate in the other person so if your relationship reservoir is is at a good level or at least even just above the gunk, you're going to, things aren't going to be as big of a deal. You'll have the energy to absorb some minor annoyances, annoyances or frustrations. But if you are already at the bottom, which always happens late at night or at 10 yeah. p.m. It's for me. So, <laughs> 10 p.m. is the witchy now. That's when I cry every day. <laughs> so you have to, if then everything is a huge deal or a bigger deal than it would normally have been otherwise. I mean, if you could, if you could replay an instant, you know, and you know, one episode of your relationship and you replayed it once when you were sucking mud and once when you were 
feeling okay when your reservoir was better, you would probably have a completely different outcome. That's a really good way to think. One about would it. just be like nothing, and it would just be like, hmm, you move on. The other one might blow up into a big fight. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I, one of one of the ways that I think about it is that it's kind of like there are are rocks um, at different levels, bigger and smaller rocks in the reservoir, and those rocks only get exposed if the level in the reservoir is low enough for them to be showing above the above the surface, mm-hmm. and and so there's a, there's a very different phenomenon that occurs in relationships if we're living on the top half of the tank. Um, when we're living on the bottom half of the tank, and especially, like Ellen said, when we're sucking mud, everything becomes a problem. From, you know, the toilet paper not being put on the roll, or, um, you know, shoes being left in the living room, (laughs) or coming home a few minutes late, or a tone of voice. Um, Just little things that, again, are part of life. When when the relationship is in good shape, those same exact things happen, right? Because you're living life but they don't even hit the radar. They, yeah. um, you don't even, you don't even feel them because you've got enough. Re- it's like, you know, if you've got a, a bill for, for $200 and you've got $10,000 in the bank for most of us paying that $200 no bill deal. is a big deal. Right. But if you've got a hundred dollars in the bank and you've got a $200 bill that you've got to pay, it's much more difficult. And the effect mm-hmm. that it has is, is much different. Um, yes. And it's also really important to remember that all of this comes back to effectively managing your own personal reservoir. Because mm-hmm. if, you're, if you're not taking care of your, your personal reservoir, then you don't have anything to give. And even if that relationship matters to you, um, it, you can open the valve and there's no, there's no water to come out. There's, there's nothing to contribute. And so... You've yeah. got to both be taking care of your personal reservoir and then making the conscientious decision to open the valve and proactively contribute to the important relationships in your life. Um, and if you're struggling with a relationship, just increasing the relationship deposits and fillers is a really, really good way. And this is actually something that Ellen is really good at. Um, we can be in, a, in kind of a sucking mud place and and she'll say something like, you know, let's go get a drink or something. And I think, I don't like you very much right now. <laughs> you know, the last thing I want to do is to go spend time. Um, but but she's and I don't know if it's conscientiously thinking about the reservoir when you do that or not, um, or if it's just sort of intuitive. But um, or if you just don't want to have distance between us, I don't know. But I think I just want a drink. <laughs> okay. But I'm why, just why you take me then? I'm just <laughs> <you're vomiting on. laughs> um, so uh she's really good at that. And and the thing about it is is that after after you get some resources in that reservoir and the and the level comes up, all of a sudden you remember what, that you actually do like that person and you enjoy spending time with them. And so just depositing more than we lose through our drains covers a multitude of problems and is what we what we refer to as first order change just having enough resources to effectively deal with the challenges and drains in life um is really important in in deciding what uh what we need to work on and what we don't yeah thoughts on that rage um I don't know. I'm just kind of, I was just kind of thinking about something that you talk a lot about with individual fillers is that you can use whatever time you have, but you have to be more intentional if you have less time. Um, Cause I just, I was just thinking that like a, a relationship filler doesn't have to be like a big long day. It doesn't have to be something extravagant. Like yesterday, Thursdays are probably my busiest day in the week. I didn't have a single break from eight till three thirty with classes and work. And then I come home and do homework. Um, and then I have work again at night. <laughs> so it's a really busy day. Um, and me and Dallin, we ate dinner together, which was good. We're trying to like make sure we sit down at the table, eat dinner together. And then we just read together for like 
five minutes. I read to him while he cleaned the kitchen. So we utilized that time that we normally wouldn't have utilized. And then we just literally just walked two blocks around the neighborhood because that we were super pressed for time, but it, that was good and it worked. And those were all things we were able to interact a lot during. Um, so I just, yeah, I just wanted to say that it doesn't have to be something big and extravagant. And even if you're really busy, you can utilize the time that you do have. Um, you just want to make sure you're utilizing it well, because if we had watched an episode of our favorite show right now, instead, it would have taken 45 minutes and probably not been much of a filler to the <laughs> reservoir. Yeah, really, really good point. You can, um, you, you, you really need to be mindful of how powerful of a filler you need. If you've mm-hmm. got three hours to, to spend on fillers, you can, you can watch a, a game, you know, you can, or you can watch a show or you, you can be, you can be sort of, um, I guess, lazy in, mm-hmm. in your filler choice. But if you've got 30 minutes or 15 minutes to spend on fillers, you need to make gotta sure be you good. <laughs> the most bang for your buck out of that time. Right. I want yeah. to, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say, you can even squeeze them in. Like we've exactly. decided we live right next to center street, downtown Provo. And we've decided if we're going to go downtown to the farmer's market or go pick something up, we're going to walk instead. It's like a five minute walk instead of like a three minute drive. And that way we have that, that can be a filler for us just walking there. And it doesn't take much more time, but it's just kind of a little thing we can like shove in the little transition times and gaps. Yeah. Really. And, and your, what you did with the, with reading while he was cleaning yesterday is a, is a really great example. A lot of times we get really married to the, to the exact thing that we're doing. Like even like having dinner together. Well, there's nothing magical about having dinner together. No. What's, what's magical is having time together and, and dinner provides a really good excuse for mm-hmm. everybody to kind of push pause to stop and make time for themselves. But if you, you know, if you're one of who's working a swing shift or different things and you can't eat dinner together, that's okay. What's what, because the important piece there is that you spend time with each other. Mm-hmm. I, I want to elaborate on, on one of the things that Ellen said. Um, and that's, you know, we, most of us use up the resources that we have every single day. And, <laughs> um, and by the end of the day, we're, we're, we're done. We're, we're out of resources. And, and so if you, and, and like Ellen said, the world looks very different and your relationship looks very different if you're sucking mud than if you're in a good place. And one of the things that I also try to get people to do is to stop fighting after like 9.30 or 10 o'clock because just by doing that, it increases – um, the efficacy of the of the fights tremendously, because yet you, you have resources to deal with it, and and in fact one of the things that um, that I think is a really powerful thing to do is to ask, you know, something that can feel like a really big deal when you're stuck in mud at eleven o'clock at night might look very different in the morning, and so if you're wondering <laughs> about whether or not something is worth hashing out. Um, and I will talk probably more about this on another podcast when we talk about conflict management, but um, sometimes it can be difficult to wonder if a fight is worth having or not. And as it relates to reservoir management, one of the, one of the really effective things that you can do is to ask yourself, is this going to bug me tomorrow? Is this going to bug me next week or next month? And if the answer to that is, uh, yeah, probably will bug me just as much now as it, just as much next month as it's bugging me now, then it's probably something that you want to address. But if the answer to that question is no, then it's probably either a reservoir issue or a window of tolerance issue and probably doesn't need to be addressed. And you don't need to to have that drain because it's bugging you because you don't have any resources. And so then to tax (laughs) the reservoir more is just going to exacerbate the problem. Uh, Could it also work? Go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead, Mom. You go ahead. No, you go. Okay. I was just going to ask, would it also work, like, if it's late at night, just go to bed and see if you still care in the morning, too? 
Yeah. Because sometimes absolutely. if it seems like a big deal in the moment, it can be easy to think that it, it actually is a big deal even tomorrow. Because you're But I feel yeah. like a lot of times if you just go to bed and then when you wake up, then you realize that you probably won't even remember. But if you do, you'll probably realize that it wasn't a big deal. Or that it needs to be addressed. Right. If it actually the only, is a The only deal. danger with that is sometimes it can decrease your motivation to address things that actually ought to be addressed. Okay. But Fair enough. yeah, it's a good thing. What were you going to say? I don't know. Just a, a lot of people would say, well, that's the opposite advice that I got when I got married, which was don't go to bed angry. Now I know for a fact that what you're saying works because I almost always am way better in the morning. It's, and most of the time, it's not even something that we need to worry about. Right. But some people, when they issue. hear that, they're like, wait a minute. I can't do that because if I don't resolve it tonight, I'm not going to be able to sleep. In fact, someone just said that to me recently. And and so you will. <laughs> do you think certain situations? I'm, I'm not a big fan at all. In fact, I, I, I did, I, I did this, uh, said this in a post a couple months ago and, and, uh, riled some people up so maybe i'll rile you listeners up too um <laughs> i'm not a big fan of the council to to never go to bed angry um because of exactly this point if you try to pay a bill when you don't have any money you can't pay the bill effectively and you end up robbing peter to pay paul and and so <clears throat> to avoid ponzi schemes in your mar- in your relationships <laughs> Sometimes it's 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 okay to just push pause and and to say, hey, I th- this is an important issue. You don't want what you don't want to do is to stonewall. You don't want to send the message to the other person that they're not going to have an opportunity to communicate with you. That's stonewalling and it's it's dangerous to, in relationships. So what you but what you do want to do is you you want to send the message that I want to do this effectively. Uh, you matter to me. Our relationship matters enough to me that I want to do this effectively. And if we try to do it now, it's not going to be done very effectively. So let's mm-hmm. wait until we're in a position, and then let's both come to the table and let's do it in a healthy way. Yeah. So that's a good good point. Well, a lot of people just will think that's opposite of what they've heard. So, right. I mean, I. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, you, many of you may have heard, heard that. And, and frankly, it's, um, bad advice. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's dangerous advice. Um, you know, it, it uh, again, if you've got the resources to do it, it, it is better to resolve than not to resolve. You don't want to avoid just to avoid. Um, but if you don't have the resources, it's more effective to wait until you do. That's the real point there. Yeah, I feel like for me, late at night, it's literally like a switch is flipped once I like run out of resources. I can literally be sitting here on the couch doing homework and then suddenly I'm like looking around and I'm like, huh, everything is really annoying and terrible. (laughs) I just am really upset about all of these things that I didn't notice five minutes ago. Like it's, I feel like I literally hit the point and then I'm like, I'm mad about everything. So yeah, I think yeah. I, I think that's, yeah, that's something that it's really good to be aware of, especially for me because <laughs> I have a hard time letting things go. I really struggle to just leave things be. Um, you but do? Stop. <laughs> I do too, um, but not that because I know it's... it's what? Yeah, it's good to be aware of that because my natural inclination would never be to not address it but i i can feel such a difference in myself once i run out of resources that like literally in the same room i can find 10 things to be annoyed about that i hadn't even noticed the whole day (laughs) exactly yeah so um i uh that's that's probably uh, a long enough a discussion on this I, I could probably talk about it for a few more hours, but there probably aren't very many of you out there that would want to listen <laughs> for much longer <laughs> than we've gone. So I, I just kind of want to um, summarize a couple of things. One of the things that I'd invite you to do is to just to take a few minutes and write down 10 relationship fillers. Have your partner write down 10 relationship fillers and then compare those lists. Love language is something that, that plays a lot into this. 
um, especially in terms of deposits. A lot of times we deposit in language that, that we speak, you know? And so I, I might be buying lots of gifts and if that's not Ellen's love language, you know, those deposits are going to be pennies instead of dollars. But if I, but if her love language is, is quality time and I, I make those deposits, then those are dollars going into the piggy bank. And so take some time, write out 10 um, relationship fillers, and then start planning. And every single day, plan a relationship filler and do three relationship deposits every day. I, I guarantee that this, as, as I've been working with people for almost 24 years now, and this is this one thing will make as much of a difference in most relationships as any other single thing. Just increasing relationship deposits and fillers and having and depositing more than you lose will literally transform many relationships. So I really encourage you to, to, um, to take the time and to, and to prioritize one another in, in being able to do that. And I um, appreciate you joining us today and um, look forward to um, next week. See ya. <laughs>